let's add a custom creative mode tab to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found us back in Telegram once more. And in this tutorial, we're adding a custom creative mode tab to our project right here. Now, what you'll find is that custom creative mode tabs are actually fairly simple. However, there are two caveats that are quite interesting indeed. And for this, what we'll do is inside of our item package, we're going to right click new Java class and there's going to be our mod creative mode tabs class. There you go. And this is going to be fairly straightforward because once again, we will need a deferred register. As always, with all of these videos and tutorials, you can double check down in the description below. There is a GitHub repository to see all of the code as well that we're writing over here, as well as any sort of issues that might arise in future versions, right? So if you're watching this once again for 1.21.7 or something like that, there might have been changes. That's all either in the description or in a pinned comment. So let's take a look. There's going to be a public static final and this is a deferred register again. This time, we actually hit a tab to autocomplete this and we have the angle brackets. And inside of those angle brackets, we define what type of deferred register this is. In this case, we are defining or we're registering creative mode tab right here. Very important. Creative mode tab. Double check that you're cho choosing the right one. It's very important because if you choose the wrong class, then you're going to have a lot of issues. This is going to be creative underscore mode underscore tab equal to a deferred register and then the create method, so dot create. And then in here, we're going to choose registries dot creative underscore mode underscore tab. And of course, we need to import this class. So click on it, alt and enter to import it. And then here we have tutorial mod dot mod underscore ID. So there's going to be our mod ID. And there we go. And as always, when there is a deferred register in a class, we need to register that too. And that is a public static void register method with an I event bus right here. I'm going to call this the event bus. We of course, also need to import this class. So alt and enter and import the class. And as always, the register method simply, we're going to call that a deferred register and on it, the register method, and then passing in that event bus right here. And then the register method, of course, as always, also has to be called in the tutorial mod class over here in the constructor. Now, my personal preference is always to register the creative mode tab over here at the very top. I do not believe this matters in the slightest. I think you can also do that afterwards, but I just personally like to register the this one beforehand. You know, the order I don't think really matters in the modern version, at least. Right. And now how to create a creative mode tab? Well, this is quite interesting. We want a public static final, then a supplier from Java util function over here. Just tap to auto completed of type creative mode tab again. And this is going to be the, the bismuth underscore items underscore tab equal to the creative mode tab deferred register that register. So the register method over there bismuth underscore items underscore tab and then as a second parameter a supplier of creative mode tab and you can see it already suggests to us the creative mode tab dot builder dot build this is exactly what we want to call you want to add a semicolon here at the end and then between the builder and the build right here that is where we put all of the interesting stuff the first thing to call is the icon method because this determines the icon that is displayed for this particular creative mode tab. It's going to be a supplier of a new item stack, as you can see. And here we're going to choose items.bismuth in this case, dot get. And that's going to be fine. After the last closing parenthesis, we then want to select a title over here that is going to be a component. And you can see very importantly, and as a component, and we're going to choose component that translatable right here, simply select this, press tab to auto complete it. And we're going to put it in here. It's going to be creative tab dot tutorial mod dot bismuth underscore items. That's going to be our key. After the second closing parenthesis, but then we'll call the display items method. And this one, might be the most important. Well, because this one, well, in here, you're going to start typing in item display parameters and you can see it then suggests this to us. Uh, click on this, press the tab key to auto completed, make a opening curly bracket. The closing curly bracket generates automatically. And I'm just going to format this just a little bit differently. And then inside of these curly brackets, this is where we can add items to our custom creative mode tab. So we will say output dot accept 
and then we can put in mod items.bismuth, for example, and we can even do the same thing again. Output.accept mod items.raw underscore bismuth, and there you go. Now those two items have been added to a custom creative mode tab. That's the whole idea. So there's two questions I always get asked. How old are you? 30? And the question is no. But the more relevant question to this is how can I now add a second creative mode tab and why does it not work properly? Because if you add a second creative mode tab without doing this one thing, then all of your creative mode tabs are sort of going to get jumbled. And that's usually not what you want. So for this, what we'll actually do is we will select all of the creative mode tab right here. Like, let's say you have this one done and this works and you're like, okay, this looks fine. If you have this, then you simply want to select all of it, press control D to duplicate it, which will well duplicate the entire custom creative mode tab for a second one. And the second one will first of all, change all of the relevant things. The name here is of course now bismuth underscore block underscore tab. This is going to be the bismuth block tab. And then here it is a bismuth underscore blocks as well. We no longer want the bismuth as a item stack here. You now want mod blocks dot bismuth block. And actually that is going to be fine. That's all we need in this case. And then here for the output, right? Well, we no longer want any items in here, only blocks. So output that accept mod blocks that bismuth block over here. There we go. And then we can do the same thing again with the mod blocks dot bismuth or. There you go. And now that is a second creative mode tab. However, how can we determine the order? Naively, you might think, well, of course, this one is displayed first because it's going to be registered first and then this one. If only it was so easy. Not quite. What we want to do is we want to call a specific method. And that method is the with tabs before method. Now, it's extremely important to understand this properly. If you call this with tabs before method, you have to pass in a resource location. So we're going to say resource location dot from namespace and path tab to auto completed. We're going to pass in tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then as a second name or a second parameter here, the string bismuth underscore items underscore tab, making sure the name right here matches the name of our previous creative mode tab. Because if I say with tabs before, then the tab that I'm passing into it right here, meaning this one, will be displayed before this one, right? So the order is always going to be, I don't know, ingredients tab, right? The spawn eggs tab, and then we get the bismuth item tab. And then always after this is going to be the bismuth block tag, right? So this is always going to be sort of as a pair. It's always going to be the items tab first and then the block tab. So those are how you add two creative mode tabs. Very important. And most importantly, basically is this method right here, which basically determines what a tab becomes before this particular tab. It is a little bit unclear. You know, the, the wording is sometimes a little bit strange to, to basically do this. You can also control left click on this and you can see define tabs that should be come before this tab. That's the whole idea here in this case. That is of course going to be quite useful. But yeah, with those two done, this is actually everything we need. Uh, well, of course, one thing we also need is the translation. That is, of course, quite right. And the translation is as easy as going in here and simply adding the creative tab, creative tab dot tutorial mod dot bismuth underscore items. And it's going to be the bismuth items here in this case. And we can simply duplicate this. Once again, just control D to duplicate it and then bismuth blocks and then here bismuth blocks. You can also double check that this is correct because we've defined the key right here ourselves. So we can simply select this, press control C to copy it over and then we can do control V to paste it in and that is all fine. So we should be good to go and that is all of the steps that we need. So let's jump into the game and see if it worked. All right, friends, us back in Minecraft and let's see. And you can already see we have a second page right here and there we freaking go. Bismuth items, bismuth blocks. And as always, I mean, and as you can see, both of them include exactly what we, well, put in there. And that is freaking awesome. And you can also see that their order is exactly the order that we would expect to basically see. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is two creative mode tabs added to Minecraft. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about recipes and loot tables so your blocks will finally drop something. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.